Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about an off-center fed dipole, but more importantly, how that off-center fed dipole helps us to put together and deploy an ultra-portable QRP station. Now the reason I look like a 70s kung fu theater voice actor is I actually forgot to turn on my microphone, so you can have a laugh at my expense. Now the goal of this video is ultra portability and it's loosely related on the how to solar power your portable ham radio series. If you haven't looked at that first episode, I suggest you do so before watching this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at an off center fed dipole and how it affects the amount of gear we actually carry in the field. Stick with me a while and I'll show you what I learned. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Now, normally in the channel, we talk about antennas which fit our requirements. Sometimes that's lightweight. Sometimes that's heavy duty. Sometimes it's easy to deploy. But when we start combining our requirements like ultra portability, lightweight and easy to carry, as well as highly efficient, we need to look outside our normal antenna toolbox. Now, I'm no stranger to wire antennas. They're definitely efficient and often, when built correctly, they're extremely lightweight. Unfortunately, I wasn't familiar with the off-center fed dipole until recently. Like many of the antennas you've seen on the channel, this one also comes from Chameleon Antenna. This one comes from their pocket series of antennas, and it's called the off-center fed dipole for 40 meters. Now, honestly, the only reason this antenna was even interesting to me was its weight, its size, and its performance. Now, here you can see the antenna system with two different radios, the ICOM IC705 and the Zygu X6100. Now, other than my radio, I've got the off-center fed dipole, I've got a carbon fishing pole, a fishing pole holder used at the beach, an RG316 coax cable, and a bit of stretch cord to stake it down. Now, of course, when I'm doing data modes, I'll also include the Microsoft Surface as part of the kit. In this scene, I'm using the telescopic fishing pole held between the bench and my fat bike as a platform for the off-center fed dipole which is extended out in either direction between two trees. It only took about five minutes to set up the antenna, get it connected up to the radio before I started operating. I'm probably getting a little bit ahead of myself here. There were actually two field tests. One was here at the beach. The other one, and the one I'll show you first, was patio portable from home. Just getting a feel for the antenna how to put it up, and how it performs before getting out in the field. Let's take a look. Sierra Tango November Stroke Papa. Uh, this is much, uh, much better. Uh, I hope I got the call sign correct, but um, your signal is now uh, uh, very loud and very clear. Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November slash portable, is that correct? 100%, 100%. I wanted to keep on trying because you have the kids there with you. Uh, so <laughs> this is a kind of an honor. I love doing these type of QSOs with the kids. QSL? Yeah, Roger. Thank you very much. And uh, I understand you're portable, so no problems. Uh, operator uh, number here on this side is 1616, which is the average age of the youth here in the radio shack. Uh, for the uh, logbook, I need your age as well. What is your age, please? Yes, your signal report is 59 and my age 53, 53, 53, QSL? Uh, 53, uh, thank you very much, old man. Oscar Hotel 8, Kishera, Tango November, Portable. Papa, India 4, Romeo, Shera, Kitos, and Hufa, uh, Yota. Thank you very much, thank you very much, and also thank you for doing what you do for the kids. 73, bye bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Papa India 4, Radio Shara, listening. Absolutely outstanding. Now, when I first started returning that station's call, there was a problem with my hand microphone 
which the station helped me identify. Once we switched over to the internal microphone on the X6100, it was obvious the antenna was actually getting the job done. Now with the experience of that radio, a few QSOs, and getting that antenna in the air, I could also take a look at what type of battery pack and solar panel I was going to use when I take it out to the field. In recent times, my benchmark is a 5 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack with a 30 or 60 watt panel. Now I believe when we're conscious about our current consumption, we'll be able to optimize this station's portable power even further. Now we'll get to that in episode 2 of how to solar power your portable ham radio, but for now we're going to show you the second part of my field test. Now for the beachfront Windlink field test, I took out the ICOM IC705 and the Microsoft Surface. The off-center fed dipole was up the telescopic mast between the bench and my fat bike. Now I used my solar panel to top up the electric fat bike while I was out on the excursion, but the radio was using the internal battery, which meant I was limited to 5 watts for this Windlink session. As you'll see in a couple of moments, this Windlink session could have been done with 1 watt, perhaps even half a watt, while using this antenna. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and show you the session. It's actually quite remarkable. So I'm pretty sure this was an NVIS contact at 501 kilometers or about 310 miles. The bearing to Oscar Hotel 5 Romeo Alpha Delta was 170 degrees. I was using the ICOM IC705 at 2.5 watts, which is actually pretty incredible. The contact was made on 40 meters. I was also using Vara HF, which is absolutely brilliant for weak signal work. The apex of the antenna was about 5 meters up or 16 feet in an inverted V configuration with the ends being tied off to trees on either side. Now total time for the session was about 5 minutes and the average throughput was 1465 bytes per minute. I don't know about you but 2.5 watts with a session to a station 500 clicks out that's actually not bad. Needless to say, I'm pretty happy with this antenna system. It's ultra lightweight, it gives me multiple bands, and we can leave the antenna tuner behind if weight is a critical factor. Now I also ran the off-center fed dipole through the Rig Expert AA2000 zoom. Now as far as band coverage, 40 meters I had a 1.43 SWR, 20 meters 1.39, 11 meters or CB radio 1.29, 10 meters 1.89, and 6 meters I guess is just there for gravy 2.67. Now I'll have to test again when I'm using a 1 to 1 choke ballon because I forgot to use it when I took these readings. So I think I'll have to run these tests again when I have a perfect installation, but so far, I mean this isn't bad. I'm absolutely happy using this antenna on 40 meters, 20 meters, and 10 meters without any antenna tuner at all. So I'm hoping Chameleon will do other versions of this antenna, for example a 60-30 version of it. Also, monoband dipole versions of it, because at the weight and size of this antenna, I can carry multiples of this thing without overloading my kit. Now I understand I'm late to the game with the off-center fed dipole, but it's really important to say bravo to Chameleon Antenna for giving us some lightweight, true QRP options. So let's go ahead and finalize this video. We're not only talking about a lightweight ultra-portable antenna, we're talking about minimizing the amount of gear we carry out in the field without compromising the amount of communications capabilities we can achieve. Now there certainly are times when I want to have an easier to deploy compromise antenna out in the field. 
but there are also those times when I want to have an ultra-portable antenna, provided it's rugged enough, out in the field to minimize my kit. So look guys, if you'd like to see more rugged, waterproof, ultra-portable antenna systems from Chameleon, please let them know in the comments. With that said, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment and or a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might benefit from it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.